I'm going to do some random pulls for Hong Kong Mahjong. If you're new to Mahjong, there are links in the video description below to a lesson playlist. Watch those videos to learn the fundamentals. You could also download this player reference so you can follow along with the scoring. If you already know how to play, I hope these random pulls can help you with your decision making. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. We're going to do four random pulls, one for each wind of the round, starting with East Round. We'll roll these dice to randomize which seat we're in, East, South, West, or North. I rolled a seven, so we're going to be in West seat west seat and it's east round i'll get 13 tiles if i were playing at a one fawn table i would play all chow all three in a sequence we have one two three, four potential chows and a pair. One, two, three, four, five blocks. That's what you need for a winning hand. We could chow here with a five or an eight, chow here with a five or an eight, chow here with a one or a four, chow here with a seven. These are all side weights, very efficient. Very good. This is an edge weight, so that one's going to be a little more difficult. But we have three discards to a winning hand, maybe, if we get the right tiles at the right time. All chow. Plus, we have no flowers, so that would be two fawn. Now, if I were playing at a three fawn table, this would not work. Because when you mix suits like this, that is the lowest hand all chow we would have to pick a suit or play all pong and we have only one pair so i would pick a suit and play half flesh since we have more cracks than any other suit i would start there and discard the lesser suit if we draw cracks stick with cracks and honors honors are wins and dragons if we draw dots, sacrifice the cracks. So the nice thing about the crack suit here is we have two pair. We could pung or we could split this up and chow. So there's a teeny bit of hope there, but look here, seven discards. That is terrible. We would be an underdog at a three fawn table because you cannot win with a chow hand at a three fawn table with mixed suits. Anytime you mix your suits like this, you're going to have a low score. Unless it's all pung, all three of a kind. Because all three of a kind is three fawn. So we would have to pair up quick or try to draw in cracks. And winds and dragons, of course. We might even watch the table very carefully and decide to play defense defense alone try to push for a wall game and hope for a better deal with the next hand because this seven discards to a half flesh that's rough okay now <clears throat> let's hope for a better deal uh-oh South round. I rolled a four, so we are going to be in north seat. I will get 13 tiles.
two flowers. We're in seat four, so we're not going to get score for these. One and two, we need four. We'll get replacements though. Whoa! We have a Pung! I would play all Pung. We have a Pung. One, two, three pair. All we need in here is another pair. And we can, we can be waiting on a pair. This could even stay concealed so they won't know what we're doing. Pung, the dragon, that'll be a fawn right there. This would be a really nice hand. Three fawn for all Pung. One fawn for the, flop, for the dragon. So that would be a four fawn hand. If I were playing at a one fawn table, I think I would Pung. Here's a Chow. Here's a Ready Chow and a Ready Chow. Pung. One, two, three, four. We would need a pair in here. Let one of those be the pair. All we need here is a six dot and a white dragon. We're two away from a ready hand. Now, if we mix a Pung with a Chow in two suits, none of these will be of value. And that would be the only value. So if it were me, I would probably still play all Pung. One, two, three, four. All we need is a pair. So I think I would play all Pung regardless. Regardless of the Fawn minimum. We're going to be the dealer this time. I rolled a five. So that would be player one. And we are in West Round. We got our own flower. This looks great. That's our seat east. If we pung, that's a fawn. It's west round, so we wouldn't get score here. But we could pung, pung. We have no other pair. Three cracks, four bams, three dots. So if we were at a one fawn table, I would chow. Chow, chow, pung, pair, one, two, three, four, five, five blocks. That would be a one fawn hand because we're mixing chows in different suits. This is where the value is. Since we have our own flower, we would get a fawn there too. So that's what I would do if I were at a one fawn table. If I were at a three fawn table, this would not work. We would need to pick a suit or pair up and pung and we have all singles so I would pick a suit since we have more bams than we do the other two I would focus on a half flush with bams we could chow here pung here and here that's three blocks obviously we need more bams six discards we would be an underdog at a three fawn table North round. I rolled a six. That's player two. Thirteen tiles.
three flower, no score. No score. We need one fawn, if we're out of one fawn table, we could play all chow. Potential chow, potential chow, here or here. This is a side weight, which is stronger than a closed weight. Here we need a tile on either side. Here we need the tile in the middle. So this would be a better set of tiles for that chow. So we have one, two, then here we have isolated tile. Here's a chow right there, one, two, three. So if we play all chow, we got a lot of work to do. We're in south seat and it is north round. Maybe keep that north in case we pair up. Maybe keep that green dragon in case we pair up because both of those can bring value, a fawn each. I think what I would do in this case is discard the west first. Try for all chow. Hold those as long as possible as we build chow potential. Right now we have two potential chows and a chow, so we would need to work on these and this. Number tiles when you're playing all chow are better than single honors, so these might have to go away. So one fawn table, all chow. If I were playing at a three fawn table, this is gonna be a rough go. I'd play a half flush with dots because we have one more dot than we do cracks. I would start by discarding the two and then start peeling off the cracks. Hold every dot I could, regardless of the number, just gather. When we run out of these discards, figure it out. Hopefully we could pair up either of these because those can bring value. So a half flush is three fawn. So no matter how you end up, whether it's pungs, chows, it doesn't matter. As long as it's one suit with winds and dragons, it would be three fawn. So we could chow, 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 but we need more. I think we would be an underdog with this hand at a three fawn table. When you get your dealt hand, you got to look for the strength of the hand. For Hong Kong Mahjong, the key variable is knowing what the fawn minimum is. Typically it's three fawn, sometimes one fawn, sometimes zero fawn. That would be a chicken hand table where you can have no value in your hand. But when there's a three fawn minimum, you've got to find ways to get score in your hand. Go to hands would be half flush or all pung. Make a plan, make it work. If you have too many discards, don't throw the winning tile, break up your hand and play defensively. Sometimes you might even have to push for a wall game and hope for a better deal the next hand. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next set of random pulls for Hong Kong Mahjong, may all your picks be keepers.